Good afternoon. Welcome to the Farm and Ranch Cleanup Grant Informal Rulemaking Workshop, where we also are soliciting for general feedback. Thank you all for coming out. As a reminder, the official program title is the Farm and Ranch Solid Waste Cleanup and Abatement Grant Program. My name is Stephanie Becker and I am the Grant Program Manager and I will be emceeing today's event. The initial purpose of today's workshop is to share Cal, Cal Recycle's proposed revisions to the program's regulations. These changes are what many would call pretty mild, but necessary. And we will go over them in more detail about midway into the workshop. This workshop has a second and somewhat unusual component to it. Uh, we are also soliciting for general feedback. Uh, since the program's inception, it's essentially been underutilized and undersubscribed, even though, through, even though illegal dumping remains constant throughout California. We look forward to any ideas we have, may have not thought of as to why this is. And we will share what we've come up with shortly. Before I go any further, I want to address evacuation and housekeeping information. Please look around you and, identif and identify closest exits. In the event of a fire alarm, please evacuate the room and do not use the elevators. Follow staff and or exit signs where we will likely relocate across the street at the park. Stairwells have a protective vestibule for those who cannot use stairs. Restrooms and drinking fountains are located on the left after exiting the room near the green hanging glass sculpture. There's a cafe on the first floor. I think it's open till 2.30. Lastly, don't forget to recycle. Uh, registration. I think all of you coming in from the building from outside or even um, internally, make sure to register. There's a registration sheet on the uh, back table. Um, there's also a uh, kind of a handmade pot for business cards if you want to just drop them in. Um, brainstorming, that's what this session's for as well. Pencils, pens, and scratch paper are on the back. Um, Let's try to get through the presentations and receive questions or comments during the allocated times. Um, noted on a piece of paper. We'll see how it goes. I think we can be more flexible with the regs. Uh, surveys are also on the table if you want to use that as a guideline for feedback. It's essentially the same as the one online. Not everybody's comfortable grabbing the mic. There's the agenda, not a lot of printed copies. It's simple today and the PowerPoint will essentially go over the agenda. Refreshments are in back. Uh, depending on how the workshop goes, we may take an official break. Help yourself anytime. Cell phones, silence them now. If you need to take a call, feel free to step outside. This workshop is being webcast through Cal Recycle Standard Broadcast Link. Uh, this workshop is email interactive. So those participating remotely are encouraged to contribute, but please do so via email. I've logged on to my account, and Heather Smith <laughs> will be monitoring my account throughout the workshop, email questions and comments to her, and they will be read aloud. And now that I'm asking any of you watching remotely, please email us your name and organization to let us know you are listening. Otherwise, we will not know. And for the purpose of the workshop, I think that's important, so thank you. Um, and this broadcast is being taped key. Uh, because of this, that is another reason why um, we've extended the format. Essentially, this is to get information uh, for future use as needed. Uh, we wanted to make best use of our resource. Um, and I think this is the time I'm going to put it out there. Um, this workshop is about re revising the regulations. Um, please note that this program is in statute. Um, so some of the wonderful feedback that we received will require statute changes. So that's kind of another reason this workshop has been um, laid out like so. Uh, thank you, Alicia Hoffman. Um, she's our ledge representative. 
Um, we haven't really done a lot yet, but as needed, uh, she knows about this workshop today. The panel. <laughs> they have a great knowledge and history of the program. Anthony uh, Bellis, <laughs> I knew I was going to put your name, uh, Bellis Strelli. Um, he is our program's legal representative and Cal Recycles, um, Cal Recycles attorney. He handles a lot of different grants besides this one. Uh, Lori Kikamoto is our section manager and she handles a lot of other grants besides this one. Um, Jeffrey Lynn is a unit supervisor and he knows this program as well and has gone through trials and tribulations with me since I've taken it over. Uh, at any time, I encourage them to jump in and comment. A lot of the information I'll be sharing today, today comes from them. Um, before we get started, I wanted to acknowledge a few people and groups out in the crowd. <laughs> uh, Sharon Anderson, thank you for being here. Um, she coordinates the statewide illegal dumping, illegal dumping technical advisory committee. And uh, that is for legal, that is a group for legal dumping of resources throughout the state. Uh, today we are focused on agricultural land, um, but, but um, through attending their meetings, um, I've learned that um, illegal dumping is rampant, again, all throughout the state, especially on agricultural land. Uh, I want to mention Steve Santa Croix. <laughs> Uh, he manages Cal Recycle's other legal dumping grants and where I also obtained a lot of my knowledge. Uh, the, his grants are um, less restric restrictive in types of land and offer more funding. They're great, but they're also more competitive. Uh, this workshop, um, this workshop, <laughs> sorry, um, also I've done research. Also, I've reached out to groups, um, the tribal groups. Tracy Harper, thank you for being here. Um, I've also reached out to the environmental uh, justice community. Um, I think Sophia might be here. She might be coming soon um, to help represent that community. I've also reached out to the top 10 agricultural, uh, top 10 agricultural counties and some specific jurisdictions. So thank you, Land. Um, the Cal Recycle Local Conservation Corps has also been notified. Um, the RCDs, the California State Association of Counties, the Rural County Representatives of California, the California Farm Bureau Federation, the California Association of Code Enforcement, uh, the Water Boards, thank you, <laughs> um, the California Hazardous Materials Investigators Association, and more to come. Uh, so we have a lot of people in the audience from Cal Recycle. Um, you guys have the mic. If anybody else want to introduce, I think we've I think we've got it. Okay, okay. Thank you guys. And then, did we receive anything online? We do have Melinda Barrett from Mariposa County listening in. Thank you. All right, you want to bring up the presentation? Thank you. Yeah. All right, and again, those of you watching online, email questions for this workshop to uh, Stephanie Becker at calrecycle.ca.gov. And if it isn't obvious, the goals of the workshop. Uh, suggestions to improve the program, review proposed regulation revisions, and feedback on proposed regulation revisions. So many of you know this grant, but I thought to get started, I'd do a quick overview. I'm used to turning around. You know, with the mic, can you see? I'm like, I'm used to speaking this way, and you'd mess me up. So formal. Okay, so this grant provides funding to clean up California's farm and ranch land. Okay, so what is farm and ranch land? Farm and ranch property as defined in Title 14 of the California Code of Regulation Section 17991D. Did I say that right, Anthony? <laughs> okay. So this is it, a piece of property publicly or privately owned. 
that is used for rangeland or agriculture activities, uh, but not be limited to commercial livestock and crop production. There's examples listed. Uh, if you go down, need not have active sales or production, but shall be appropriately zoned or otherwise authorized for agricultural activities. Uh, a pertinent easements for right of ways, such as, but not limited to, public roads and utilities. Um, I put that cool graphic up there. <laughs> um, just to remind people that the Farm and Ranch Grant covers a lot of different areas. Um, rangeland, rural lands, uh, urban gardens can be eligible, tribal land. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that that part was driven home. Uh, so, so who are the eligible applicants? Cities, counties, resource conservation districts, and federally recognized Native American tribes. I wanted to shout out resource conservation districts. If some of you don't know um, what they are, I took this quote from their website. A network includes 98 special districts serving rural, urban, and suburban communities across the state. What I like to call is uh, stewards of the land created out of the Dust Bowl. Every state has them, and they're very prominent in ag communities. I want to say about half of the applicants come from RCDs, if not more. Uh, this program provides at least $1 million every fiscal year, uh, $200,000 maximum per applicant per fiscal year, $50,000 maximum per cleanup per site. Uh, applicants can apply for multiple sites on the application. Awards are, oven, awards are only given for sites that will be completely cleaned up, so no partial cleanups. We want success stories. No matching funds needed, and multiple cycles are offered annually. Applicants can also apply for previously remediated sites. Uh, re another way to say that, reimbursement for sites already cleaned up. Usually if you have an illegal dumping pile, you want to get it as cleaned up as quickly as possible. So once you do that, you can be reimbursed for um, that if you have all the information. Our pilot program option offered the third last cycle, should funds remain. Uh, this this um, application can be awarded with only a, an approximate location of sites and an estimate of how funds will be spent. And this is going to be included in our reg revision. That's been very successful. Uh, eligible costs, if it isn't obvious, <laughs> disposal, recycling, materials, which includes revegetation, preventative measures, uh, equipment, personnel, and administrative costs. Illegally dumped, I wanted to add this in there today. Uh, sometimes uh, people f forget that it does have to be unauthorized or illegally dumped. It can't be from the property owner or inherited. Um, uh, I'll probably get into more detail on that later. Um, the history. Anthony, you want to go over the history? <laughs> okay. Um, so this, thank you. Um, a lot of this comes from him or my version. So um, this program was enacted into statute in 1997. Uh, it was it was a stopgap measure. Uh, what I think some people call stopgap measure. Um, farmers and ranchers were getting cited from their jurisdictions because they had waste on their land, and it wasn't theirs, so they were getting fined and this was to help prevent that. Um, years gone by, my understanding is they stopped getting cited or a lot of farmers and ranchers are sufficient to just clean it up themselves. We'll go into that in a little bit more detail later, but fast forward, um, there's still, um, this is still happening, but um, it, the intent of the program, it was never, they never had as many cases as maybe they thought or why, why isn't it used as such? Um, illegal marijuana grows, so as time progresses in California, the uh, waste stream in California, or I shouldn't necessarily waste stream, but the type of materials, illegal dumping on the lands have changed to illegal marijuana grows and homeless encampments, of which this grant is eligible and that is considered illegal dumping. Um, underutilized, undersubscribed, um, I wanted to put that in a bullet point. So this program essentially sen since its inception has been that. So um, here's 
my next slide is just to kind of kick it off, get it in record, um, because it's taped really um, when I first started, you know, what, what are reasons why it's underutilized? I've heard these from some people in the hallway, speculation, here's a list, and this is where later, if I'm forgetting anything, please add, going through it quickly. Illegal dumping's not a priority, not enough bandwidth in organizations to apply or not worth the time. People think it's limited to farm and ranch property. The application process is too complicated. The ag community finds it easier to just take care of it themselves. I mentioned that a little bit before. Did not know the program existed and used other resources for illegal dumping. That's another thing that I wanted on record, as you'll see in the agenda, is actually report and survey to get a little bit more feedback um, so I wanted to share share this. Um, so there is every grantee who closes out the grant is required to do a final report. And you know what, I should have left the actual um, question on the slide, but as part of the final report, uh, I found them going back for as far as uh, 10 years. This grant's been open for about 22. So uh, 62 of them. Uh, about 62 have taken, I found about 55, about half of them had like no comment or wasn't addressed and about 16 of them, um, let, me, let me give you the question first, how about that? The question is, describe any findings or recommendation that you feel could improve the farm and ranch grant program or future cleanups. Um, so out of that, uh, 16 had positive response. <laughs> So, uh, which is good, uh, they, and I wanted to mention that the uh, previous, they had um, good accolades for the grant manager who ran this grant previously and also for the interim grant manager and backup who ran this program for six months, Kathy Agregard. <laughs> okay, um, I learned a lot from too. Um, and negative comments, so there were 11, but overall positive, but I still felt the need to share this report that existed. Um, and I wanted to put all the comments there, but in the interest of time, <laughs> was not suggested. Um, here are the, the summary of the comments. Increase award amounts for each site to cover rising cost. Sites may change in character between the time the grant is written and awarded and the actual cleanup takes place. Uh, we've noted this is a statute change, but at least it's shared today. Um, increase the allowable administrative cost from 7% up to 10% to cover increased cost, so 7% in statute. A quicker turnaround time, simplifying the forms, and a sim sim simplified grant database. As far as survey results, thank you for those who participated in the survey. <laughs> We had about uh, 10 takers, and um, we had 10 takers, or 11 takers, and 10 that applied for the grant. Uh, nine were happy. Those six made suggestions, um, and you will see them here. And one did not take the grant due to the amount that the grant was over, uh, due to the amount of the grant, due to, due to the amount of the grant um, offered, the funding offered. Um, overall comments um, I have is some people are more familiar with grants than others. Um, so the survey results, here's three. Allow cleanup beyond agricultural zoned lands. Um, that's something restricted in statute. Allow continuous filing and decrease number of forms. So thank you again for participating. Before I go any further, I do want to say that the, um, the application guidelines and instructions, procedures and requirements, so this is part of the um, application, will be opening soon, and it is revised. Yay! So that was a lot of the comments that we received, so there's a win. Um, and thank you for um, everyone up here who contributed to that, and also our fiscal processing Oversights Unit, I think I said that right, so thank you, Maria Elena, for <laughs> all the editing on these the documents as well. Um, so fiscal year 2019-2020 application opening soon. Uh, there is a component for that's uh, revisited the environmental 
environmentally preferable purchasing and practices policy uh, required of all competitive grants. Um, it is now accessible. I removed duplicate questions um, and es essentially streamlined it. So that was a lot of the feedback of the program, so maybe that'll fix it. Uh, additional feedback, um, let us let, when it'll open any day now and once it's open, uh, please provide feedback on that. And now one of our goals of today's workshop, um, additional suggestions to improve the program. So with all that said, thank you for bearing with me and getting it <laughs> on tape. I'm opening it up now. Any feedback you want to provide? Did we cover it all? <laughs> okay. Larry Sweets on behalf of the Rural Counties, ESJPA. Um, and, and thanks for this, and also thanks for all the presentations you've given to our group, trying to solicit more members. Um, and I think one of those suggestions you mentioned was from one of our members as far as loosening up the requirements to have more flexibility for identifying sites. Because there is um, a lot of cases where they may not know specific areas and they just need to get people out there, a code enforcement officer or somebody. So having that flexibility ahead of time to maybe have a general goal of cleanup of some areas without specific sites could be helpful. Um, another thing I was wondering about is the definition on the farm. You guys have really f added flexibility into that, but I wasn't sure how that would fit where you've got a pile of stuff sitting there that straddles an agricultural and maybe another zone or on a public right of way owned by a jurisdiction that isn't zoned agricultural. So you've got a pile that's split there. You can't clean up the whole thing under that, possibly. Um, is there any way to look at that as an option? That may require statute change as well. Um, when we get further down to the regulations, we, uh, we're adding one line to kind of open it up, the definition a little bit further. Um, but uh, thank you for your comment and Thank you. I mean, we'll definitely address that further. Do you guys do you guys have any comments on that? Um, and a lot of times when we look at the property, um, sometimes we can find ways to make it work, but it really depends on the specifics of that um, property and the stuff that's dumped. So it's hard to say whether that would be broadened or not, but try to, whenever possible, working within statute and regs, make it happen. Are there any We have other? a comment from Melinda Thank Barrett. You. Uh, she's saying there are usually only two cycles, February and July. People can't wait for the final approval and many can't afford to pay it first and wait for reimbursement. Thank you. Any any comment on that now, panel? I just want to. In the past uh, few cycles, we've been able to offer three, um, and that's something else we'll talk about later as well. Um, and there's always, um, if it's an instance where it is an emergency, we do. Um, pay for previous cleanups as long as certain criteria are followed. Thank you, Melinda. All right, there will be, uh, further down the agenda, we'll have the opportunity to comment even more, but now we are going to move on. Uh, we are going to review the regulation revisions. Uh, does anyone need a definition of what this means? Okay. Uh, we decided on having the changes noted on the slide instead of a scrolling text, but Heather is, uh, has the text available as needed. Yeah, does it navigate it? Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, so just to kind of gauge these on the slide, I, there's 25. Okay, just so you guys kind of have the bandwidth. Um, I'm just going to 
go through them. Um, and here we go. So we've changed board to department. I'm essentially going to read them verbatim. I think it's easiest. We're going to expand uh, the farm and ranch property definition. And this is kind of what we talked about a little bit. Uh, thank you, Larry. To, um, to add the sentence, the formative property extends to the right of way or the creek riverbank as long as the zoning is appropriate. And then you'll see the lines uh, correspond um, to the revised reg language post online when you may have a few copies still in back. Replace language to reflect up to three cycles. And we added text to implement the deferred site grant application. Deferred site grant application, that's what we're naming pilot program. So this is an area where um, we are open to increasing it to up to four cycles, or it currently it can be up to four cycles. So I kind of wanted your feedback on this one, particular one. We do have to have specific cycles. It can't be continuous because we have a grants management database system um, where we do have to open a cycle and close a cycle. So does anyone have any feedback on this one? Okay, well, if you think about something, you can feel free to email Stephanie. Thank you, Lori. Update language, number four. Update language to reflect current online, uh, our current online application process. Add language of the proposal which shall include but is not limited to. Enable staff to obtain more details about the project. Add any to innovative programs within the jurisdiction to discourage illegal dumping. Omit the proposed method to evaluate the success of the project as a requirement. The data is included in the final report. Streamline language. The site characterization form includes detailed site attributes. Simplify cost estimate language. Uh, it makes it consistent with other Cal Recycle grant programs. Add any to innovative programs within the jurisdiction to discourage illegal dumping. Add section 17993.4, contents of the deferred site grant application option. This is the pilot program. Uh, we're calling it deferred site grant application. Streamline, this is, so this is the last number. I get really crazy with my bulleting sometimes. <laughs> Uh, so 12, st uh, streamline, condense, and combine language in section 1799365, the grant criteria. And this starts on uh, 240, line 244, and this is all one section, and it's going to be uh, lettered. Omit, demonstrated the need for the project. This information does not add value because all applicants apply to clean up the property. Replace measurable goals and objectives in the work plan with demonstrates complete and clear objectives. This will simplify what the application what the applicant needs to provide. Omit descriptions by task of the activities to be undertaken to achieve the objectives. This information is in the work plan. Omit description of a method to evaluate the success of the project and determine whether objectives were accomplished. These changes will simplify the application. Condense language defining what is cost effect effective. Omit the preference text. This is duplicate text. The preference te text is addressed in more detail in lines 261, uh, 261 to 263. All right, how are we doing? Still want me to go through? Thumbs up? Okay. 
um, delete, uh, delete detail that expenses are reasonable with all program elements are itemized in the budget. Uh, the budget will reflect this information. Grants with unreasonable cost will not be awarded. Omit the phrase, setting forth deadlines and evidence. The work plan includes this information and is addressed in line 247. Combining line 268, adequately remediate the site with available funds and within lines 259, 260. Omit the level of health, the level of health and safety threats or environmental concerns and public nuisance described in the application. This criteria is addressed in section 17992.3 site eligibility, uh, site eligibility, am I reading that right? Site eligibility rem remedial action is required to protect public health and safety and or the environment or to abate a nuisance. Okay, those, so that's the, that's where it's um, in that section. Omit the environmental soundness and practicality of the proposal. This criteria is addressed through the work plan. Omit the maximiza maximization of available funds. This criteria is addressed in lines 261 through 263. The work plan and the budget are designed to identify funds not being ma maximized. Omit the applicant's ability to adequately remedi remediate the site with available funds and combine it with criteria lines 257 through 260. Uh, when referring back to this, uh, C12G um, provides context for the applicant to show evidence of resources to remediate the site. Omit the availability omit the availability of other funds to clean up the site. This is not required when the awarded funds are sufficient to complete the cleanup project. Edit text to reflect green practices and not just green procurement policies and omit where appropriate and feasible. Edit is consistent with Cal Recycles EPPP policy. Uh, we are, um, this is, we are going into the, uh, I will, here, let me do this. <laughs> Here's our timeline. I'm like, I'm going to just use this. Here's our regulation timeline. It's tentative, um, but I feel we're going to make all these accordingly, maybe sooner. Uh, so in January 2020, uh, we're going to present the form, equal, for, ooh, present the formal, rulemaking package to Cal Recycle Director. The formal public hearing be April 2020. Cal Recycle Director approves the final regulations in July 2020 and will submit regulations to the Office of Administrative Law. Did I say that right? Thank you. <laughs> uh, July 2020. Um, so with that said, we are, on a, we are on a timeline or we would like comments, even though this is an informal workshop. Submit them a month out, August 19, uh, so a month out. Uh, 2019, to me, I made it simple. Um, and so we're going, what is this? Goal three, I believe, feedback on proposed revisions. I know we went through that pretty quick. I didn't know how to clean that up. That's, I think, the best way to do it. Do you want to open up the text? What do you guys have for me? And then of course you can get back to me. A show of hands, any, anybody want to dive into the, the proposed revisions now? Okay. How about online? I keep forgetting about them. Uh, we do have a comment from Brian Cross, and he's saying adding an additional cycle would be great. Having a cycle that would allow for post cleanup reimbursement would be great. Many of the issues that San Joaquin County has to address are the large number of acts of illegal dumping that are smaller in size. Um, these occurrences are not always in the same location. It would be great if jurisdiction could simplify a vicinity or area in a grant application that may be Im impacted regularly. Thank you. Thank you. And 
Uh, I didn't catch the name. That's Brian Cross. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Um, I'd like to clarify also that um, for Brian and anyone else out there that it is for post post cleanup cleanup is eligible. Um, you just have to make sure that you meet the criteria that's outlined in the guidelines and instructions to make sure that all of the criteria are met. And it's best if you have questions to check in with Stephanie to make sure that you're going to get your costs covered and that it's eligible. Because it, the key is, some, which some people forget, is that it has to be illegally dumped. And kind of dressing the program overall together. So this just was I wanted to do. Again, this is tape. Thank you all for coming today. Get something on the books besides just in writing. I think a second phase is going to be doing some more outreach um, and definitely more site visits. So that kind of leads in maybe to kind of speeding that up as well. Um, so definitely site visits. Anything else on this? OK. Questions, questions or um, what's another way to put this? Any other feedback? I wanted to make sure we um, got to the regulation revisions today because it is important. We do need to update them, you know, just make them applicable to what, 2019? <laughs> um, but otherwise, any other feedback? Um, just kind of get the conversation started. Tracy, thanks. Thank you so much for the presentation. Really appreciate it. Um, and thank you so much for working with me, um, working with tribes in California and getting the word out about the availability of the grant program for them. Um, and in that regard, I have, I have two questions that we can talk about later, but I wanted to make sure to get them out there. One is that um, for the purposes of, of working with tribes in the state of California, the Cal EPA policy is to work with um, federally recognized and non-federally recognized tribes um, equally to the extent we possibly can. And I know that we've brought that up and talked about that in the past, so I'm hoping we can have that conversation um, going into the future now to, to look at that item. Um, the other thing is I can hear um, from going to Cal EPA tribal TAC meetings where I'm the um, representative, the tribal liaison from Cal Recycle, that one of their issues has been um, having to front the money or pay for things and then be reimbursed. Um, and I just wanted to let you know that I'm sure that's going to be one of the questions or comments and to see if there's any way that we could work on that or come up with some creative solutions or something to that extent. So I wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't be, I would be doing them a disservice if I didn't bring that issue up because that is something that's brought up time and time again by, by tribes. Um, nevertheless, they have had really positive experiences with this grant. Um, and the Cal EPA Tribal TAC Chairperson, Sarah Ryan, who is the Environmental Director for the Big Valley Band of Pomo Indians. She and I will be making the presentation at the US EPA Tribal Conference. Um, and she's done this before and shown them really just very nuts and bolts, step by step, how you work on um, the grant. And, and she really um, does sing our praises when it comes to um, funding these cleanups and how really important and vital it is. So I'm hoping that we can get more tribes participating um, and then again to work on, um, we can talk about in the future about state tribes that we recognize the same as federal as well as any chance of trying to figure out some sort of way of um, not just doing reimbursement. Thank you so much, Tracy. Uh, that's in. Uh, thank you. We're going to put that down, and we will address it. And that's uh, wonderful. Wonderful. Anything else that you guys want to bring up? Okay. Closing remarks.
So I will likely send out a summary of today's workshop and any next steps we are going to take. Addressing any concerns, um, like I said, sharing any next steps. Uh, continue, continual feedback on this program is always welcome. Um, and especially uh, as the application opens any day now, uh, the new G's and I's and P's and R's, uh, let me know what you think about them and if you stumble on anything. Um, do you guys, panel, do you guys have anything else you want to say? Uh, just in regard to the federally recognized tribes, that's actually part of the statute. The section that they use to define uh, Indian tribe in the statute precludes non-federally recognized crime, tribes. Uh, and we have in the past been looking at, at changing that statutorily. So that it's in the process and it, it's been looked at and we're trying to get that done. So. All right, thank you so much. That concludes um, today's uh, informal workshop. There's still some, um, some refreshments in back. Uh, drop your business card off, fact sheet, uh, my business card, uh, and anything else. Thank you. Bye.